Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Bonjour à tous. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are meeting on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Three Fires Confederacy of First Nations, the Ojibwa, the Ottawa, and the Potawatomi. My name is Eric Kuzmierczak. I am the Member of Parliament for Windsor Tecumseh and also the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Employment, Workforce Development, and Disability Inclusion. I wanted to say uh, right off the bat, thank you so much to uh, Tony and uh, the good folks at More Term for hosting us here uh, this morning on this beautiful, sunny, warm day. You know, folks, uh, since 2019, we've brought record investment uh, to this community. We've brought record automotive investment, largest automotive investment in the history of Canada to Windsor, Essex, and that means jobs. We've brought record investment in terms of uh, building affordable housing. We've brought record investment to Windsor, Essex for flood mitigation. And we've brought uh, record investment as well to, to uh, Port Windsor. And we know that there is tremendous opportunity for Port Windsor to play a huge role as an economic driver. But with that opportunity as well comes responsibility and it's responsibility to look after the environment, uh, to conserve our oceans and our waters, and to be good environmental stewards as well. And on that note, uh, to provide more details on today's announcement, I am absolutely delighted to welcome back to Windsor-Essex our good friend and a champion for this re uh, region, the Minister of Transport, Omar Al-Gabra. Minister. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Eric. Good uh, morning, everyone. What a beautiful morning. And I'm glad you're enjoying the dry uh, weather on the other side of this uh, door. Uh, but it's, it's such a pleasure to be back here in Windsor, to uh, be back with Eric and to see all of you here. Um, there's, it, Windsor's going through an exciting uh, period right now, and Eric uh, talked about it, so I'm happy to be back here to uh, reconnect with friends and to talk about the great potential that we know Windsor is able to achieve because of its talents, because of its people, because of its entrepreneurs. I'm happy to be here with my friend uh, Eric, along with Steve from the port, Tony from Essex Terminal Rail, uh, Mortem Limited, and members of the Chamber of the Marine Commerce, as well as uh, workers here at the terminal. Great to see you this morning, everyone. Thank you very much uh, for being here and for everything that you do. This port is so important for several reasons, especially because it is a commercial hub, both domestically and internationally. It helps ensure that Canadians receive goods and creates good well and well-paying jobs and overall helps build an economy that works for all Canadians. Based strategically at the heart of the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence Seaway system, Port Windsor plays an important role in linking Canadian and U.S. markets while connecting us to the rest of the world. But as hundreds of vessels visit this port to pick up Canadian grains and salt, they may accidentally leave behind aquatic invasive species when they unload ballast water. Ballast water is essential because it allows vessels to operate safely by adding weight so the vessel floats at the right depth and stays level and stable. But even though ballast water is essential to vessels, action must be taken to protect the environment. Releasing this type of water can introduce and spread invasive species that can harm native species, degrade local environments, impact fisheries, and even disrupt the infrastructure we rely on every day. For example, the zebra mussel, which entered the Great Lakes through discharged ballast water, causes almost $250 million in costs on the Great Lakes every year in Ontario alone. This species threatens key infrastructure like power stations and water treatment plants and regularly damages commercial vessels and personal watercraft. And this is why our government is taking action. In 2021, we adopted new ballast water regulations that keep prevent 
aquatic invasive species from entering and spreading in our waters. Canadian ship owners are stepping up to meet the challenge of addressing these risks and implementing these new regulations. Today, we're taking further action. I'm here to announce a new investment of $12.5 million over the next four years through the Oceans Protection Plan to launch the Ballast Water Innovation Program. Under this initi uh, initiative, we'll provide funding to support industry-led research that improves the performance of ballast water management systems in the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence region, St. Lawrence Seaway region. Transport Canada is now accepting project proposals until May 10th, 2023 for, the, for projects that will begin this year. This program is an important step to further reduce the negative impacts of ballast water. For example, it will fund research projects that ensure ballast water management systems are optimized for unique water environments in the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence River region. And it will also provide innovative solutions to ensure the successful implementation of the new ballast water regulations. We've made a lot of progress to date, but our work is not over yet. By addressing invasive species in our waters, we can better protect and restore our marine ecosystem while strengthening our economy from coast to coast to coast. For example, even as we address ballast water risks today, we're also working with the U.S. and other countries to prevent invasive species that can build up on vessel hulls. That's why we continue to advance ambitious commitments through the now $3.5 billion Oceans Protection Plan, the largest investment ever made to protect our coasts and waterways. The Oceans Protection Plan has shown it's possible to protect the environment and support Canada's economy when governments, indigenous peoples, industry, coastal communities and academia work in partnership. Today's announcements, we're making progress towards these goals. And before I close, I want to say once again that I'm delighted to be back here in Windsor. I'm delighted to be making this particular announcement here in Windsor. Um, Eric talked about a lot of the, uh, the work that happened over the recent years in investing in Windsor, in inve investing in the people of Windsor. There's more work being done by Eric. He's cooking up a lot more stuff uh, uh, in partnership with uh, entrepreneurs, industry, the port. I'm looking forward to coming back more for more good news, but I'm delighted at least today to be here with you making this announcement on behalf of the Government of Canada. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, uh, Minister, for bringing that excellent announcement here uh, to Windsor-Essex. We are a Great Lakes community, and so it is important not only that we make investments in our economy, make investments in jobs, make investments in Port Windsor, but it's also important that we balance that with investments that will protect the Great Lakes uh, that, uh, that surround us. And now it is uh, my great pleasure uh, to also call to the podium and introduce uh, Steve Sammons, who is the President and CEO uh, of Port Windsor. And I can tell you that I had a chance to meet this morning uh, with the Board of Directors of, uh, of Port Windsor, uh, Chair Walter ben Benzinger uh, and uh, Steve Sammons and his team there. Um, they have been tremendous partners, uh, really visionary partners, tremendous leaders, both in helping to build that potential, economic potential for the Port of Windsor to really play a central key role uh, in the North American supply chain, but also being tremendous stewards of our environment and being tremendous partners on the, Ojib on the building of the Ojibwe National Urban Park and the preservation of Ojibwe shores. And so, Steve, it is uh, with great pleasure and honor. You've been a great partner, great friend, and it is my honor to now introduce you to the mic. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, Eric, and uh, Minister Algabra, we uh, couldn't be more delighted to have you back in Port Windsor again this morning. Uh, you've been here so many times, uh, you've become a very familiar face and a very welcome presence, so we look forward to uh, many more visits in the future. 
Uh, the minister uh, and Eric have alluded that uh, there are some very excited, exciting announcements coming forward uh, that are going to be transformational to this community, to this port, uh, uh, on an economic level, uh, on, a, on an environmental level. We almost certainly have uh, this, uh, our chair, Walter Benziger, beside me here. This board for more than 10 years now has been uh, completely supportive of the uh, development uh, 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 of an uh, urban national park for uh, out of the Ojibwe lands that we've held. Uh, of course, the bush behind us looks uh, like prime port land, but it also is prime natural heritage land. And uh, the government uh, has been very active in this process. I'm sure you're going to hear some more announcements from the government on this soon and some announcements from the port on this soon uh, to make sure the community uh, gets the uh, parkland it's looking for and the environmental integrity uh, they expect of the port on the waterfront. You know, our, uh, our contribution to environmental protection of the waterfront uh, goes back a long way and happens very quietly day after day, year after year. Um, this port is very active in the Friends of the Detroit River group. Uh, it's active in waterfront cleanups every year. Uh, we have, we uh, as a port are the largest non-municipal entity for the construction and building of fish habitat, preservation of shoreline. And uh, we recently, with the assistance of the federal government, uh, Eric announced uh, two years, three years ago at our port, a $140,000 climate change study, because we know the world is changing, the climate is changing. And, uh, and, and through that study, we have now uh, have a long-term plan to, uh, to, to plan and prepare for the changing water levels and changing climate conditions. So, um, so yes, very much, the port is an economic steward. It's a social community steward, most certainly, but equally, and a, a third pillar, just as strong and as important for us, is environmental stewardship. And so we're very pleased to hear this uh, announcement today. We who live here uh, 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 on the water in the Great Lakes, it's the most, it's the most important asset to, and attribution for our community. And to know that uh, it's receiving another level of protection today, uh, is, 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 I think is a great news for the community, great news for the support, and uh, very much appreciated. So thank you very much, Minister Eric. Well, thank you very much, Steve, for those uh, warm words. I can't feel my hands, but the words are very much appreciated. Uh, and now I'd like to uh, invite uh, to, uh, to the podium uh, Tony DeTomasis, who is the President and Chief Executive Officer of More Term Limited, to say a few words here today. Tony. Well, good morning. Um, I think these guys usually see me driving around in my car. They don't see me standing in the rain very much. I watch them usually standing out there doing all the all the grunt work and all the work that makes things happen around here. So I uh, just wanted to echo the partnership between the minister, uh, minister and Transport Canada and Steve Sammons and MP Eric Kuzmerchuk. It's been a it's been a great partnership for the region. It's been a great partnership for industry in our area and the investments that are being made. I, I think we're really, for the first time in a long time, aligned in what the vision is for the in, for the region. Uh, we're good at moving freight. Transport is their core function is to move freight in a safe, effective, efficient manner. And that's what we that's what we strive to do every day here at More Term. So on behalf of uh, Essex Terminal Railway and More Term Limited, I welcome you, Minister Algebra, again to our region and extend greetings to Minister, Mr. Kuzmerchuk as well for taking time out of your busy schedule to attend. It's been a positive working experience with the Minister and Transport Canada team on the initiatives and approaches to improve trade and streamline the movement of goods, both by water and rail. I applaud the federal government for the, for the enhancements to the Oceans Protection Plan Ballast Water Innovation Program, not only to continue to prevent the introduction of invasive species, but also focusing on the spread of species within Canada and the transfer of species from Canada to other countries, ensuring the protection of Canada's coastal waterways. More term is Port Windsor's only car uh, cargo terminal. With federal funding, we are increasing uh, terminal and warehouse capacity to improve our position by creating the transmodal hub that this region needs. The benefits of the expansion include supporting supply chains, trade, jobs, economic competitiveness, and lowering the cost of imports and exports increasing market access for existing businesses, 
and new businesses to the community while increasing, while creating new jobs in higher paying freight related industries. Furthermore, the enhanced trade capacity at Port Windsor will align us with previous government initiatives, such as the Gordie Howe International Bridge, Herb Creek Parkway, and the new EV battery plant. In closing, I'd just like to thank the federal government for their continued dedication and investment in this region, and we're excited to emerge from the other side of the pandemic and look forward to continuing with recovery and contributing to the efficient movement of commodities while driving trade. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, uh, Tony, and, and again, uh, to you and, and to the incredible workers uh, here at More Term, thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for the quiet work that you do, the vital work that you do that keeps our economy uh, humming along. And so I just wanted to say hats off to you, and thank you for all your tremendous, uh, tremendous work. Uh, and now, thank you. And now I think we're going to pass it over uh, to the minister's team, to Nadine, for uh, q and A's. I'm not sure if you guys want to do that at the podium or if you'd prefer a scrum. Yeah, I'll get you. Yeah. Scrum, okay? God bless you all. Thank you. Perfect. I think we're just going to do a scrum. Sorry, the mic. Oh, now it's on. Uh, so we'll begin with the question and answer period of this. Are we not doing this? Oh, okay. Mr. talked about the funding, but uh, how will it be rolled out? Uh, so this is uh, uh, an open call inviting uh, partners in the, in the industry and academia to submit proposals uh, how to deal with uh, ballast water management. Uh, so we're really looking for innovative ideas and, and research uh, opportunities to help uh, identify new solutions uh, to tackle uh, the risks of invasive species. Um, so looking forward to hearing ideas from the sector. Um, we have, uh, the, uh, the call has been open till May. Uh, so we're inviting those who are interested with expertise to make submissions. This seems like a pretty broad range. This could be anything that they could present to you that uh, needs funding? Well, there are some terms, and we'll be happy to share them with you. But obviously, the focus on is on ballast water management uh, and to reduce the risk of uh, presence of uh, invasive species. What relationship have you had with the Environment Ministry over this proposal? Uh, this is done under the Oceans Protection Plan, uh, which has been the largest investment uh, uh, that Canada has ever made in protecting our oceans and waterways. Uh, by the way, none of you have asked this question. Isn't it amazing to make an Oceans Protection Plan announcement in Windsor? Uh, uh, but this is to really highlight how important the Great Lakes are to our economy, to our environment. Um, so um, the Oceans Protection Plan is uh, done in coordination with Oceans, uh, the Ministry of Fa uh, Fisheries and Oceans, uh, Minister of Environment, uh, and uh, uh, Finance. Uh, so there's uh, several departments that have been uh, integral uh, part of the Oceans Protection Plan, but the lead is Transport Canada. Uh, I'm not sure which one, uh, Steve, or uh, just talk about if there's anything you're going to be applying for, what kind of, why is this important uh, for this waterway? Well, certainly, I'll talk uh, uh, as a port uh, industry, as a marine industry, I'll comment. Uh, this is going to be absolutely critically important, of course, to the shipping industry that uh, has, uh, for many years now, been very committed, you know, to environmental protection from uh, from the biofuels that we're now, you know, supplying here only in Port Windsor on the Great Lakes, uh, to reduced emissions, to new paints that... Uh, uh, on their hulls that reduce resistance and new ships, the uh, billion dollars, billions of dollars in investment by Canadian shipping industries to uh, to be more environmentally sensitive to the Great Lakes and, and friendlier to our, our our environment and climate in general. Um, the the issue of ballast and protection of our Great Lakes is at the forefront of our shipping industry. I know that for a fact, dealing with these people every day. And um, uh, but at a local level, of course, we. Uh, 
Uh, we, we have institutions such as GLEAR at the University of Windsor, who we work very, very closely with, who uh, are greatly and deeply invested in the protection and monitoring of Great Lakes and base, invasive species. So uh, I'm really excited to hear about this grant, and I'm going to be calling my colleagues at GLEAR as soon as I get back to say, I think you've just found some funding for the work you're doing. <laughs> Tony, uh, kind of a little off topic, but you mentioned uh, the work that you and your team are doing. Uh, you mentioned the Gordie Howe Bridge, you mentioned the uh, Parkway and the battery plant. Just how busy of a time is it right now uh, for this industry? It's, it's a busy time. Those are projects that I think that uh, I was referencing the government's made, you know, big investments into our area and to our region. We are seeing cargo come in for those three, those three projects. We do handle a lot of the material through more term. Um, again, we're only a stone's throw away from the new Gordie Howe International Bridge. The parkway project was mostly granular, but there was some steel for overpasses, so we were handling a lot of those. Um, and we are currently handling some of the steel for the new EV battery plant in Windsor as well. There was a grant that was announced in November, October for a warehouse expansion. How's, how's that going? Yeah, that's the minister was down making that announcement back in, I believe, July it was. So we are currently underway and we're, we're doing the engineering work and we're doing utility relocation and we're hoping to have that building up by the end of the year. Eric, do you want to say something? Yeah, no, uh, I mean, uh, you're looking at the fact that Windsor-Essex really is the center of the EV revolution. So we're seeing Windsor-Essex taking a leadership role in terms of the transition to zero emission vehicles. Huge investments in this region, $9 billion. And at the same time, Port Windsor has the opportunity to really be a leader in the North America supply chain and uh, to really be part of the solution to some of the challenges we've seen in supply chains uh, globally. And so this is just one more investment We've made record investment. This federal government has made record investment in Port Windsor to really make it a key player, not just here in the region, but uh, across the continent as really a multimodal uh, uh, supply chain hub here. And so we're seeing Windsor-Essex playing a leadership in automotive, and we're going to be playing a leadership uh, as, a, as a port and as a gateway uh, supplying the rest of North America. Um, just quickly for uh, Mr. Gabra. Um, the train derailment in, in East Palestine, Ohio. Um, like, what was what's your initial reaction to that? Is there and how is that going to affect shipments that are coming into into Windsor? Uh, uh, first, you know, like uh, anyone who saw the images, I was shocked by uh, by the outcome of that uh, massive uh, derailment and the environmental and economic and human impact that it's had. Um, I've been. Um, being briefed, I was being briefed to uh, continue to be briefed by Transport Canada on the findings uh, uh, of what had happened, what had caused it. Um, uh, I've instructed Transport Canada to ensure that we learn some of the lessons learned um, uh, from that uh, tragedy and see if we need to revisit any of our rules. Look, uh, Transport Canada has some of the strictest, safest rules in the world when it comes to freight rail uh, and we do have one of the safest uh, freight rail system in the world having said that all it takes is one accident to cause dramatic damage and we need to remain vigilant and make sure that uh, we constantly assessing and evaluating our system and the um, emergencies act inquiry report was uh, was released recently what changes do you see happening to windsor if any First of all, uh, you know, I still remember uh, those days how um, anxious people were in Windsor. I visited uh, just a couple of weeks after or a week after the blockade was lifted. Um, I had met with entrepreneurs, businesses, workers who were impacted by it. Uh, I met, I spoke with the mayor about it uh, and our government was there to help the people of Windsor. Um, I hope Look, we all learned the lesson from that, uh, uh, and and the uh, and the commission report outlined many of those lessons. Um, there are things that could have been done, that should have been done, uh, that could have prevented the escalation that we saw. But um, we did the right thing at the time, uh, given the seriousness of the situation, given the the potential risks of escalation. We did the right time, reluctantly, but we felt we had to do what we did. And I'm glad that uh, the blockades and the occupations were lifted without any serious injury to anyone. One of the recommendations from that report was to 
create a coordinated uh, approach with the municipality, with the province, with the federal government for that ro roadway leading up to the bridge. Um, do you see that happening anytime soon? Um, look, we did see uh, some, what I would call confusion at the time, um, of jurisdictional responsibilities, of authorities, and um, and I, uh, you know, I can assure you, we're going through the report in details, and uh, we're gonna. I, I am meeting this week, later this week, with my provincial counterparts. Uh, we're gonna be discussing uh, those recommendations and see. I think it's it's clear that there needs to be better coordination and communication between various levels of governments when it comes to emergencies. If I may, real quick. Just on the asylum issue. So, you know, I mean, I guess Windsor is going to be receiving or has received a few asylum seekers. So, I mean, from the government's perspective, what's being done down here to ensure, you know, their safety, to ensure, you know, their passage into Canada, I guess? Look, uh, first of all, it's important for um, our immigration system to have uh, a fair uh, process for those who seek asylum, that they are given a due diligence and due process, so their uh, um, their application is assessed independently in a non-political way. Having said that, uh, the, our government has been there to support municipalities and communities who are integrating newcomers, including refugees, making sure that they have the uh, services and the needs uh, that come with them. Um, and we will continue to partner with our municipalities. And lastly, I want to say that our government uh, continues to be in discussions with the U.S. about how we can modernize the Third Safe Country Agreement. Uh, it's clear that there is an opportunity for us to strengthen it, improve it, and enhance it. And there, uh, there's ongoing discussions with the U.S. on. Tech-wise, too, uh, like, is there any discussion on you know, uh, elevating the surveillance capabilities of you know, organizations like the CBSA? So our, uh, and Eric, I know I'll have something to say about yeah. this, but our government uh, has invested half a billion dollars in the CBS, in CBSA uh, to modernize it, to, uh, to improve its abilities, to intercept uh, weapons, uh, intercept uh, illegal narcotics or any other um, uh, illegal activities. We will continue to work with CBSA on ensuring that uh, they're able to do their job and the resources that they need is made available to them. I don't know if you want to add to that, Eric. No, I just wanted to say, obviously, as a, as a border community, we know the, uh, the risks uh, of, uh, of smuggling, of contraband, uh, smuggling of weapons, uh, even human trafficking as well, too. And so, uh, as the minister mentioned, uh, this government made uh, close to $500 million uh, investment in modernization of our, of our borders. Uh, that's critically important. Uh, at the same time, in 2019, we brought forward a $60 million, close to $60 million uh, plan to combat human uh, trafficking and human smuggling. We know that that's absolutely critical. And I know that our community received close to $700,000 from that funding uh, to, uh, to partner with partner organizations on the ground that work to combat uh, human smuggling and human trafficking as well, too. We know that there is more work to be done. But again, uh, through partnerships and through targeted uh, investments, uh, we are combating those uh, those three issues uh, here in border communities like ours. So I guess the partnership with the port is very important in all of that, right? I, yeah. I, I can tell yeah, you I was gonna fact say, that uh, yeah, yeah. part of that uh, national funding came to uh, Port Windsor for the installation of, uh, of cameras on the waterfront. We have several cameras that uh, are, are uh, motions uh, activated, they're infrared, so uh, they have the ability to, tr to pick up automatically and track uh, small craft moving across our river. That uh, not only is a concern, of course, in terms of protection and security of the waterfront and the port, uh, but also human safety. I mean, it's dangerous out there on the river in small craft. Uh, in winter conditions, certainly, and uh, most certainly during the summer, there you know large ships that are out there. So um, that that funding from the federal government enables us to install this lidar technology, laser uh, radar, across our entire waterfront. We're expanding that further this year, and uh, that technology and imaging is shared on a regular basis with the Windsor Police, the uh, RCMP, uh, and CBSA, uh, so that uh, we are able to intercept them get them safely to the shore, and then process through the normal channels. So, it's a uh, daily thing, eh? Uh, almost. Almost. I would not be exaggerating to say that it is uh, certainly a weekly and, and, and sometimes a few times a week. 
Yeah, so, uh, but again, you know, w without the technology, without the funding assistance to protect our waterfronts, uh, uh, th that would not have been possible. We would not simply have the human capacity to manage it. And uh, this funding and this technology has enabled us to uh, provide the security the part that's expected of us and the protection of the community that they expect of us. And of course, human protection. Yeah. Yeah.